It's not scientific at all, but it works. As a nurse working in northern Haiti, Melissa Curtis is trying to deliver a baby in primitive conditions. Yeah, there's no reason why she hasn't had this baby. She's just exhausted. In one corner of the room is a premature baby weighing less than three pounds. In the other is a mother struggling in labor. When the unborn baby's pulse drops, the only oxygen machine in this clinic is taken from the preemie and given to the mother. I just spoke to the head nurse and she said, there's not any availability here of C-section, so what's gonna happen is gonna happen. About 100 miles northwest of Port-au-Prince, the city of port de Pay, population 250,000, has no paved roads and limited electricity. It's the poorest part of Haiti and a stark reminder of the state of health care even before the earthquake struck on January 12th. By 8 a.m., 400 patients line up at the Northwest Haiti Christian Mission. Its clinic doesn't have enough equipment, but is still one of the best in the area. Are you already starting to see effects of the earthquake? Absolutely. What kind we of saw them immediately. We saw a huge population shift to this zone. As many as 700,000 people left Port-au-Prince after the quake, 50,000 came to this area. Mary St. Fleur is one of them. The house fell down on you. Yeah, the house fell down. And our roof was being like this in my head. A steel door crushed Mary's leg and broke her foot. Her leg is badly swollen, and she came to the clinic because she's afraid of losing it. Where do the tears come from? Is it from the pain or the sadness or both? I don't know. Even a simple x-ray would help the doctors figure out why her thigh is so swollen. You can't get a CT or... But there's no x-ray machine here, and Mary can't afford the $15 it would cost at the public hospital in Port de Pay. The earthquake crippled the health care system already desperate for a government overhaul. But the disaster incapacitated the government, too. 49 of the 80 public hospitals in Port-au-Prince were damaged. An estimated 10,000 non-governmental organizations, or NGOs, have stepped up to care for the 2 million Haitians living in tents. This is the best formula for disaster. That's what I've, been said. I've said since the beginning. Dr. Reginald Lubin is a Haitian doctor working for the NGO World Vision. When you look behind you, there is not enough space, not enough uh, sun coming into the tents. And people are living in promiscuity. And you have not only all the risk for epidemics. Epidemics of diseases like typhoid and hepatitis. And without clean water or proper shelter, the best efforts of NGOs are not enough. This used to be the Ministry of Health. Rebuilding it will be the easy part. The hard part? Creating, for the very first time, an effective public health system. To do that, there needs to be leadership and coordination under a central organization. NGOs coming from all over the world, they do whatever they want. Dr. Gedeon Gellin is a former government health official. He says the outlook is not good. In my mind, it is very clear that the health system could fail. To keep the system from failing, there's a call to decentralize Port-au-Prince, move the resources into other provinces, and encourage NGOs to train Haitians to help themselves. As the nation struggles to survive, back at the clinic, the two babies do the same. The premature baby's mother seems resigned. How did you feel to see the baby so small? My heart was breaking because I see that my child is so weak. What comes next for, for you and the baby? Well, God gave me this child. If he takes it, it's his will. The preemie is having trouble breathing. In the U.S., over 90% of such babies survive. But five days later, the baby boy died. <laughs> As one mother grieves, Hello, baby. the mother we saw in labor welcomes her healthy baby girl into the world. A six pound, 11 ounce symbol of Haitian resilience. <laughs> Dr. John Lapook, CBS News, Port de Pay, Haiti.